Looking over Ireland's capital city is a 1200 foot hill. Upon it is an imposing stone building that has been notorious for centuries. 300 years ago it was used by one of the world's most secret societies. Inside the building they would practice all kinds of strange rituals, and it wasn't long before rumours emerged of human sacrifice, demonic possession and even the devil himself being summoned within the lodge. A fire eventually forced them to abandon the lodge. The society survived and continued their practices, but it was within the stone lodge that their darkest and most notorious rituals took place. The lodge today is commonly referred to with the name of the society who used it, the Hellfire Club. It was built in the early 18th century by William Connolly. He was not born into wealth, being the son of an innkeeper, but his father saved up enough to send him to law school. Connolly became a lawyer, which made him enough to buy land. The British government needed quick money to fund war efforts against rebels, so they sold more than 4% of the total land of Ireland. Connolly got a good deal on over 3,000 acres, as the government wanted to sell it quickly. This land is what made him wealthy, and he died the most wealthy man in Ireland. Even for a rich man, life in those days was really boring. Probably. So he spent his time on construction projects, one of which was a hunting lodge. A hill just outside Dublin was chosen by Connolly to be the perfect spot for his lodge. The only problem was the hilltop was already occupied by a mysterious ancient tomb. So like the crazy old man he was, Connolly had the tomb destroyed to make space. It was a strange move considering there were many other hills to choose from, but the man was a maniac. So much of a maniac that he had the lodge built in part with materials taken from the tomb, which is just asking for trouble. Trouble hit as soon as the lodge was built when a storm blew its roof off. Connolly simply wasn't having that, so he had a new roof built from stone. Some said the storm was a curse he unleashed by destroying the ancient tomb. But let's face it, blowing the roof off a building isn't much of a curse. It would be a major concern for any homeowner, but still nothing compared to other curses. They tend to cause death. By coincidence, Connolly died soon after. The lodge wouldn't see much use until the emergence of the Hellfire Club. There were many secret societies in Europe at this time, but the Hellfire Club was unique. It was founded by a former Freemason who was rumoured to be capable of black magic. He claimed to uncover some mysterious ancient scrolls in Egypt, which were once kept in the Library of Alexandria, one of the largest collections of knowledge in the ancient world. It was destroyed in a fire and we can only speculate what secrets were lost forever. Apparently the scrolls he found gave him access to ancient lost knowledge, on which he established the Hellfire Club. Members embraced sin and regularly practiced what the church called immoral acts, but it went beyond pleasure seeking. They referred to themselves as demons, and to their leader as the King of Hell. He wore horns and long robes to disguise himself as Satan. They rented the Stone Lodge, partly as the hill it lies on was once owned by the society's founder. Being a secret society, we can't be sure about what they did inside the lodge, but legend tells their practices grew darker and more deranged until they began to kidnap locals and sacrifice them to Satan. It was also said they would leave one chair empty at each meeting in case the devil decided to join them. The most famous legend surrounding the Hellfire Club tells that he did. It was a cold and rainy night. Two Hellfire members were within the lodge playing cards. An exhausted looking man knocked on their door. He had a strange accent they had never heard before, and they did not know him. But given the harsh weather that night, they invited him inside. The man sat down to play cards with them, and immediately began winning. After a while, one of the members dropped a card. When he went to pick it up from under the table, he saw that the stranger had two cloven hoofs where his feet should have been. It said the stranger was Satan, and he took those two men back to hell with him that night. Stories like this made locals scared to step foot on the hill. Today it's a tourist attraction, but still said to be haunted by ancient spirits unleashed when the tomb was destroyed, and by demons that escaped hell when the devil came to visit. Another story tells of the Sheriff of Dublin making a pact with Satan. Like many Hellfire Club members, he loved to gamble, but this brought him massive debt. To escape the shame of bankruptcy, he agreed to give his soul to the devil within seven years if the debt was paid. His debts were settled and the next seven years were good to him, but one night Satan returned to the lodge to claim his soul. He wasn't willing to give up his soul though, which I can understand. So he called for members to celebrate the devil's appearance by performing a black mass. 
Other members agreed, and when the devil was distracted by their worship of him, the man escaped and ran away. It's unknown how long he was on the run before Satan took him to hell. Things were really getting out of hands for the Hellfire Club, and when a fire damaged the lodge they decided they needed a fresh start. They moved to a new meeting place on the same hill. This time it was a grand estate, but by now their meetings were far less often. It seemed as if the society was slowly dying, but in 1771 the group was revived by a man known as Buck Whaley. He was mad enough to suit this strange name, earning a reputation as a corrupt greedy gambler. At one time he moved to Paris but was forced to flee the city soon after, as in one night of gambling he gained more debt than he could afford to pay off. On returning to Ireland he was elected to the Irish Parliament, where he became notorious for his wages with other politicians. Leading the Hellfire Club he renamed it the Holy Fathers, but brought back many of the original practices. Rumour told of the Holy Fathers abducting a local woman, sacrificing her within the new lodge and drinking her blood. Another rumour surrounded Whaley's death in 1800, telling he was stabbed to death by two sisters, both of which were scorned lovers of his. The Hellfire Club died with him, memory of it largely faded, and today few people are aware of the Hellfire Club's existence. For a long time the society had a mascot, it was a large black cat. It said that one day members of the group doused the cat in alcohol and set it alight. They released the cat outside while still on fire, and it ran until it burned to death. It's also said the hill and its surrounding area has since been haunted by the cat. Its large ghost appears before people who walk the hill at night, with its bright red glowing eyes. The cat usually doesn't hurt people, but just looking into its eyes can cause a person to faint. Many who live in surrounding areas have reported seeing the cat appear, with a gust of wind strong enough to open locked doors. Some hear these ghost stories and have no idea they have their origin in the Hellfire Club of the 18th century. It was never the most notorious secret society, and there were many others in that time, but it might have been the darkest, if some of the stories about the Hellfire Club are true. I just want to give a quick shout out to another channel you might be interested in. It's called History and Headlines, and fitting the name they do a couple of types of video. Top 10s, and every day they make a video on an interesting event that happened on that day throughout history. It's a young channel and they're still developing their style, but I recommend subscribing. It's quite a fun way to learn about history. I'll leave a link in the description.